It was going to be with Santos. We just did one live together, but due to technical issues, the lovely Malika is graciously hosting this live stream and helping us make this possible. So thank you much to the goddess Malika for your time and energy and love. Thanks. <laughs> and <laughs> for, <laughs> for anyone who was watching the live I just did with Santos on Christic geometry and the word of remembrance or the found word, we're gonna show a 44 second clip of a draft I'm making about that word, and we'll treat it as a benediction to imbue this omnicast with the spirit of stewardship, the courage to accept the things we cannot change, the strength to change what we can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. So we're gonna play this short 44 second clip as a benediction, pronouncing the tetragrammaton, the word of remembrance, and you'll see on the video how it plays into the numerology and even elemental aspect. And there's uh, more information in the description. We'll put a link in Santos's live notes so you can see this on your own time because currently it is unlisted. So we'll go ahead and play that right now. So, uh, my legal name is Ember, like fire. My spiritual name is Amber. I am honored to be your remembrancer. And hallarchy.cc is one of my platforms. My art is at ember.space. And I'm remembrancer on SoundCloud where you can hear 432 hertz music and poetic expressions. Now, I used a word called omnicast before. And that is because I want to make presentations and I am making presentations that are not completed expressions, but they are processes of becoming. So I see this as like cats part one. But if this calls to you, if you've had experiences that are validated by what we're going to talk about today, please reach out to me at askamber at protonmail.com. And we can talk about doing a part two or extensions, little add-ons to this series because it's a very important um, subject matter. And as an omnicast, as omni implies all, totality, we're going to be using words, images, videos, texts, resources to encourage user engagement so this is not infotainment. So the link for today's show Go ahead and open a browser if you have access to one and type in holarchy, which is H-O-L-A-R-C-H-Y dot C-C forward slash post forward slash underscore cats. So that's holarchy dot C-C forward slash post forward slash underscore cats. That will be the reference guide. We will post that the descri description link below in watching this later on. Um, before we uh, go, go into this page that you can see right now, this is going to be what we're going into. Uh, we're just going to click very briefly to tie up a loose end to the Christic geometry video that is also on the library blockchain. So what we see right now, um, I talked about in the video before with Santos that Christic geometry is a thing, and it is kind of the counterweight to sacred geometry. Sacred is dualistic, polarizing to the sacrum. Christic geometry is trinary, polarizing 
to the crown and third eye Ajna chakra. So you can watch this video, which is on library.tv. My channel is called Hallarchy on there, and it's called Pure Amid. It's dedicated to all the babies from the 1980s. Lots of references in there to pop culture, and it'll tie in the work of Frank Chester, Nassim Haramine, and how this is a real thing. And this is the sympathetic white sigil magic that we as magicians can use to improve our lives and resonate with the higher magnetic modalities that we are embodying. So check out library.tv forward slash at Hallarchy and uh, you will find a couple videos on there uh, and check out the Christic geometry. And if you're interested as an artist to collaborate on the word of remembrance or Christic geometry or maybe something that you have, um, reach out to me. Art is so important because it is, it is the crystallization of every culture's virtue, ethos, and what they want to exalt and uphold. Uh, I studied art, psychology, and anthropology at Stanford University. I quickly became jaded with the psychology department and the anthropology department, trying to use a Western projection to understand mostly Eastern modalities that were outside of their toolkit and schema. And I slowly came to see that Stanford and a lot of the other um, educational institutions are very tied into mind control. And I've spent many years unlearning. And if you're one of those children who's kind of bummed about not having the college experience, you're not missing out on a thing. Trust me. With channels like Santos and the work that Malika is putting out um, and many other people, you basically have an education at your fingertips here without these agendas and schemes and think tank, think tank undertones that really permeate those schools, not to mention the drugs. So you might have saved yourself a lot of time. So if you're bummed about not, go, not going to college, don't be. Um, you know, the universe is your university. So that's just dedicated to all the, you know, 18, 19 year olds who are freaking out about what's going on right now. And uh, just, it might be the best thing that ever happened to you. So we're gonna transition back to the cats blog post that's on Hallarchy. Um, and we're gonna actually start by scrolling all the way down because this, uh, this post is actually dedicated to uh, Dio Bonacci and Sonia Bonacci. Um, so that, that poem sync up right there that you see, uh, this poem sync up is dedicated to Dio. Um, and I, I really feel like a great way we can all engage with each other. Again, this is all about encouraging audiences to create, engage, and refine this process of becoming. Um, we can make art together that lifts us up because all the art that's getting pushed out there through Holly Weird and all these other scenes, the record labels that are corrupt, it's really an attack on the spirit. So our best defense is equipping ourselves with art that has a higher meaning, higher intention. And this is a syncretic kind of spoken word that um, is dedicated to Dio Bonacci. Santos's beautiful son. It's called Sync Up. Syncretic, prophetic, didactic, dynamic art. From the arcing of our mind to magnetism of the heart. No other story than going in to the source of outer parts. Born to remember. We never end when we know how we start. Stars way of an inner unseen. Revealed the veil of a tale that's in between. Mastery of mystery. The mist tree that burns within. Inner gardens worth weathering, starving through life separation that makes some harden. Shake off the shackles and redefine shekels that make persons a power for tyrants that trample. Seek first the kingdom between your two temples. Sing out as we won the now presence of mental. Ascend bloom lotus, cherish devoted virtue. 
Love of wisdom as risen chrism fuels total truth. The soothsayer's a cool player when it comes to using you. They cop and flip a sacred gem that holds a light betrothed to you. Fishers of men made fishers in men, so pair a sights make homes in you. Yet arise the lamb, Aries of your crown, to buck the system and tear lies down. Tears of an evanescent essence wash off the filth until we're found. The authentic you, combining double you as twin Taurus of your bi bull fully resound. Trying to the tea of an esoteric body, wine of the blood is my sweet mesmeric hobby. Sipping on the wisdom as I post in heaven's lobby, tripping on tryptamine endogenous is never sloppy. Becoming breath as spirit springs beyond the name that's not me. For the love of this eternal kiss, syncretic bliss of the Miss Tree's God key. That's to you, Dio Bonacci. And so now we're going to scroll up to the tippity top of cats. Forgotten history. Beta sex kitten programming and parasites. We got that epic <laughs> epileptic inducing cat image on the top. And it's setting the tone of uh, a very serious subject, but we have to be a little bit playful. Otherwise, uh, you know, we're not balanced. So we're going to start in that spirit uh, with just a quick origin story of how this came to be. And um, that's me having a conversation with Santos about two ex-girlfriends that we'd had, kind of our most, our most recent ex-girlfriend that we'd had. And we both had this experience of um, a really intense breakup and then seeing them associate with people that were below their value and seeing their sexual expression degraded and that being a real source of pain and tension uh, in, in, our, in our lives and in our heart that we're dealing with. And I realized that one of the things they both have in common is cats. And if you look into a cat parasite called Toxoplasmosis gondii, this is a cat parasite that cats can transmit to humans. This is why when you're pregnant and when you have a, a newborn, you do not want them around cats. Uh, it's, it's known to create stillborns. It's known to create blindness. And in males, it makes males prone to schizophrenia, to isolation, to suicide. And it makes women prone to risky behavior, to aggression, and what are kind of alpha male-like characteristics, and also hypersexuality. So if you've ever seen... This, the reason this is kind of playfully, but also seriously, dedicated to Sonia Bonacci is that her Facebook picture, as I recall, it's like she has like a cat whiskers, like Snapchat filter on her face. And uh, that is part of sex kitten programming. Um, if you are familiar with MK Ultra, sex kitten programming is a real thing. We'll be going into that. We'll be going into all of this. This is just an overview of why this is worth your time and why this might connect some dots in your life about relationships, maybe your own sexuality. I'm sure I was infected with this parasite myself. So the way that this polarizes the sexes, I know is being used against mankind right now. As we're gonna see in a video later on in this presentation, it's estimated that at least 50% of the world is infected with this cat parasite. So this is a very serious subject. And before I run the risk of like being a cat hater, I love cats, they're beautiful. It's undeniable that they're very cute, intelligent, 
I, I had a cat named Shadow. She was a fantastic, beloved companion of mine. I have my own little cat videos with her that I love to make. Um, and I even, you know, I loved the cats of my ex-partner when we were together. Um, but the more I learn about parasites and how we are being treated like pets, you can invite this perspective that may pretending to own other beings and being their owner is tied into the karma of feeling like you are also owned. And of course, there are exceptions to the rules. So people have pet sanctuaries, people have psychological trauma, and they have a pet to keep them sane. I get it. This is not for you. This is for people who might be wanting to get an animal, or maybe they've had a partner, or maybe they wanted to understand the biochemistry of the crazy cat lady phenomenon that absolutely comes from this cat parasite. It actually makes people love cats. So they just want more and more and more and more. And uh, we'll be getting into how cats are likely a hybrid being. But before we get into any of the, the weight, we're going to bring some levity in with some funny cat memes because who doesn't love a funny cat meme? So the first one is man's best friend, dogs, and my worst enemy, the cat, is thinking that about the dog. And that would be funny if it's true, right? Dogs are like an unconditional love. You know, dog backwards is God. So maybe there's something more to this whole cat versus dogs things that hasn't been presented. And then we'll scroll down to the next one. If I can get to the command center in his head, dot, 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 I can shut him down. <laughs> and that's literally true with this cat parasite. It does go into the human brain. So it's a real thing. And who knows, maybe they're thinking that thought. And then uh, trying to study, who hasn't had this happen who has a cat? Trying to study or do anything? Oh, let me, uh, let me help you out with that by rubbing all in your paperwork and your computer and your guitar or whatever. Cats love to interrupt. <laughs> oh man, they're just devilishly cute. We have this mean, hilarious. No, I haven't seen your LSD. Have you seen the blankety blank dragons in the kitchen? <laughs> Dilated, busted, kitty. Busted. And we'll just scroll through these other ones. You can read them at your own time. And if you're. I have a question about that last one. Oh, please do. Please. <laughs> what? So, what, what is that? What does it mean? Like. It ate it? It means that the cat discovered the stash of hallucinogens and theogens, uh, denied consuming all of them like a rookie, and it's uh, the cat is seeing visions of crazy dragons <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, you got busted, kitty. You got way busted. Yeah, Malika, also, if you, if you have any questions, Malika, you're always welcome to chime in. I don't want your karma. <laughs> I just want your soul. Ooh. Sometimes truth is the best way, or sometimes comedy is the best way to convey truth. So let's keep scrolling. I think we got a couple more. There's no time. I love this one. There's no time to explain. Cat behind the wheel. Get in front of the car. <laughs> <laughs> savage little kitty savage i have who has not felt this owning a cat that they actually own you i have claimed this tiny human for myself you may leave now bad cat etiquette that is an example of what not to do never have your newborn children around cats that is a big faux pas pun intended Why does the human slave keep stealing my poop with a tiny shovel? <laughs> and 
The reason why is because the whole cat litter is de designed to infect people with toxoplasmosis. So that's a main way that this parasite gets transmitted is that people scoop the litter and then they breathe in all that dust. I used to be responsible for cat litter. I would literally go in the room, breathe, scoop some out, dump it, run out, breathe, and come back in. You do not want to be breathing in that devilish, dusty poop. Just really bad. Look at that cat. He's so evil. All right, let's keep going. Maybe we'll get some cute ones. The awkward moment when you realize that the person you're making fun of is right behind you. Yeah, we're making fun of you cats. That's right. We just went meta on that meme. All right, let's keep going. And now how true is this? If I just keep looking cute, they'll surely blame the dog. <laughs> yeah, their cuteness is weaponized. All right, let's keep going. Long story short, you're out of toilet paper. That's just for the times that we're in right now. Shout out to early 2019 or early 2020 madness. Okay, that's enough cat memes. Now we are gonna click on this first link looking at the prevalence of toxoplasmosis. This is Joe Rogan interviewing uh, a Stanford professor, um, Robert Sapolsky, who's the foremost expert on the cat parasite. So this is a real thing. Not that you needed the validation of a institution to know that anything is real because you don't. But, um, you know, that's what makes people feel good. So this is someone who studies this for a living, and he's going to talk to you about how, how prevalent this cat parasite is. And this is from 2017. What is the number that you estimate in, in Americans alone that might have been infected? It's, it's on the order of, well, I'm not sure with Americans, but worldwide, it's something like 50% of humans is the best guess. 50% of humans worldwide. Something on that scale. With and for people who never heard of this, would you mind explaining what this parasite is and how it affects rats and then cats and then people? Okay, totally bizarre. So it's this, this protozoan parasite, uh, Toxoplasma gondii, and it's got one of these weird parasitic lifestyles. The only place on Earth where it could be is in the gut of a cat. I don't know why there are people who know this, but so it reproduces there, comes out in the cat feces. Feces are eaten by rodents, and now Toxo's evolutionary challenge is to get that rodent into a cat's stomach. So what Toxo has evolved is this ability. It slowly migrates to the brain of rodents and basically wipes out the innate fear that rodents have of cat smells. Like, you take a lab rat who's been, like, the descendant of lab rats for, like, a thousand years and have never seen a cat and put, like, a little puddle of cat pee in his cage, and the rat's going to go on the other side of the cage. Just a hardwired, instinctual aversion to cat pheromones, and then put toxin in a rat, and it loses that aversion. And, in fact, in a subset of rats, they like the smell. So, out in the natural setting, you now consume the rodents inside the cat's stomach and Toxo has completed its life cycle. Well, I'd heard that it was, uh, it was so it's a subset of rats that, that actually are gravitated towards it. Cause I'd heard it actually rewires them sexually, right? Yes. That that's actually work that we did in my lab that it basically crosses some of the circuitry in the brain and the hypothalamus so that cat pheromones that used to be activating every alarm circuit in your like limbic system in these rodents now instead sort of taps into sexual arousal pathways and in male rats when they smell cat pheromones they increase testosterone production um so toxo has just figured out the most brilliant way of doing it it makes cat pee smell sexy do is there any understanding at all of the mechanism of how a parasite can figure out how to rewire it. Okay, we're gonna stop right here. The predator. So, very interesting information, right? This cat parasite, which my contention that this is not evolved, my contention is that this is likely engineered. But who knows? Um, that's just what I think could be true. So, 
what you just heard is that at least 50% of people have this in the world. So if you're looking to the person next to you, likely one of you two have it. It not only acts on the amygdala, it reroutes fear responses into the sexual arousal. So this makes the rats attracted to the cat so that they get eaten. And then the parasite goes back and reproduces in the gut of the cat and the cycle starts on all, all over again. So as we're about to look into beta sex kitten programming, could this also be affecting the human amygdala in the same way? And could this be why it is provably shown that people with this toxoplasmosis are prone to risky behavior? Because things, I think it's something like, um, we'll see a statistic later on, but it's like you're over two times likely to have this parasite if you get in a motorcycle accident or even ride a motorcycle because you're prone to risky behavior. So uh, just, the, just the idea that this prevalent parasite in cats is affecting the sexuality, the mental health, and the physical well-being of our species deserves a very, very close, deep and severe analysis of this potential. Because as we know, so much of what's going on in this realm right now has to do with parasites. That's why politics is like poly meaning many and ticks, bloodsuckers. It's all about parasitism. It's all about, you know, we are in and coming out of Pisces. This is my perspective. I know some people think it's different. Um, but in my research, you know you're in a new age when on the spring equinox, the sun is rising in that sign. And uh, it is still technically rising in Pisces. I think it's that it's the fish that's swimming towards Aquarius. So we are kind of in this gray zone of transition to Aquarian energy, but it makes more sense to me that that's what it would be instead of like, we are in Aquarius because clearly many, many people are buying into this mind control and they just want to be told what to do by the government and trust that like a Stockholm syndrome. And then there's other people likely watching this channel that want to think for themselves, want to be sovereign and know that, Authority is the truth or no, sorry backwards. That's what I used to think truth is the authority Authority is not the truth So those are the two fish one is swimming towards authority the other one is swimming towards the truth of Aquarius And if you look at Aquarius, there's also a, a fish at his foot the fish's eye is fomahalt Which is related to the word thalem, which is teacher related to the thalamus um, But uh, I could go on about that. Um, and that is all to say that it's really time to take a deep look at the subject and reconsider. Are we supposed to be touching and loving and kissing animals? Is that a normal behavior? Is that how are we, we are to steward? Or is it more to make sure that we can rewild them in, in environments where they can eat, reproduce, protect themselves? To me, I don't want to be domesticated. This whole process is about rewilding the soul. So if we domesticate an animal, that's likely going to be done to us. And if you look at them, you know, zoom out, that is kind of what's happening is that humans are being treated like chattel, cattle. They're being domesticated. So this is kind of like a fractal perspective of our co-creative role in this. This is not a movie. You're not watching a movie. And you're not to eat popcorn watching a movie and just be passive in what's going on in the world right now. I hear a lot of people talking about that. And that is just, that's so much fear in that statement because it makes you feel like you have no power and role in what you're witnessing. Where the reality is that you are a co-creative being projecting this reality as well. The pineal gland is projecting. So, and you know, popcorn, you can't even digest that. So get out of there. If you want a popcorn flavor and texture, just toast some seaweed with uh, coconut oil and rosemary, delicious. Or just eat it raw, even better. So we're gonna go into some of these links. Uh, we're not gonna click the links, but the links will be there for you to view on your own time. Because I want you to question everything I'm saying. I'm not coming to you as an expert. 
I'm coming to you as someone who is curious and willing to be wrong, but I've experienced enough pain in my relationships and I've seen how that's related to not being sovereign and how, you know, it's not just the food, it's not just uh, the music, it's also the pets and how that's such a big part of our culture. So to really hammer in the importance of this subject, we're gonna take a look at the effects of cats on other life forms. So uh, this quote from Scientific American, um, we're just gonna read the quotes from these links and you can click them on your own time. Uh, it says, every year, billions of birds, billions of birds and mammals are killed by free ranging domestic house, house cats, Felis catus, and millions of reptiles and amphibians on top of that. Domestic cats are on the IUCN's list of the top 100 world's worst invasive alien species for their ability to decimate prey populations. Uh, the next quote from animalquestions.org. Toxoplasmosis has been known to cause stillbirths in pregnant women, as well as birth defects such as blindness. The best way to prevent toxoplasmosis is to bring outdoor cats indoors to prevent parasites. In addition, and I would kind of like disagree with that second statement, I'd just say like, don't have cats, okay? <laughs> In addition, women who are pregnant should avoid the fecal matter of cats and have somebody else change the litter box as toxoplasmosis is often transmitted this way. Again, do you wanna have any risk to your children at all? At all? No, of course you don't. So get rid of the cat. It's a no brainer. <laughs> I'm passionate about this. So I know this is gonna offend a lot of people. I don't care. Facts don't care about your feelings. These are the facts. We, th this is clearly to me that these are to be rewilded. Clearly they'll do well on their own. I mean, they're decimating tons and tons of wild prey. So they're going to be fine. So there could be a solution where like, you know, we don't necessarily have to wipe out all cats. We could just maybe put them on an island or something. But, you know, that's not for me to decide or maybe even weigh in on. But um, moving right along. WashingtonPost.com. What else has vertically slit pupils and also occasionally hisses? The serpent. And who made the first biblical appearance as a snake? That's right, Mr. Satan. It was in the Middle Ages that the tension between cats and catholics <laughs> began to escalate. In 1233, Pope Gregory IX's Vox in Rama a warning against the perils of witchcraft, accused its targets of canoodling with a black cat that was actually Lucifer in disguise. Although the Pope also deciphered frogs and ducks, or decried rather, frogs and ducks, anti-feline prejudice quick, quickly swept the church. Cats were burned, hurled dramatically from bell towers, a practice that is supposedly memorialized today in a bizarre annual festival in Belgium. We're going to get into all the bizarre cat rituals that are in the culture. And so this goes on to talk about how cats were kind of blamed for um, spreading the Black Death because cats kill rats and people think that the rats were spreading the Black Death. But if you really look into it, it's likely that it was just put in the water or the food system and the rats were just kind of scapegoated on that. But even the people who think that uh, research shows that cats are reluctant rat killers at best and that uh, cats do kill plague infected rodents. Of, um, let's see. Research has shown that cats are reluctant rat killers at best and cats that do kill plague infected rodents often plague themselves. Spread it to humans through fleas. So that's just saying, even if the cats are demonized, they would still be part of the spread by the logic of it being in rats. Um, and then the next quote is saying down there, doctors had long known of a mysterious parasite that can cause grave birth defects in human children, but they didn't know where it came from. It wasn't until 1969 that scientists realized that this creepy 
Uh, let's if we could scroll down there a little bit more. This creepy disease, toxoplasmosis, uh, which has likely influenced the human constitution since prehistoric times, was spread exclusively by felines. In the decades since, that story has gotten even spookier. Human fetuses are not the only ones affected. Toxoplasmosis, some research suggests, also holds sway over healthy adults and has been linked to ailments from obesity to brain cancer to schizophrenia. Some researchers even think that the cat parasite can manipulate human personality and behavior, causing infected people to become attracted to cats, hence cat lady syndrome, and otherwise be maneuvered by them. Hand to God, I was with my last partner for over a year, and even at that point, she would always tell me her cats were more important than I was to her. And uh, her whole life revolved around them. And I've seen that in other cat owners too. There is an obsession, an obsession. You know, it can be more than love. So, um, yeah, it's interesting to note that this was discovered in 1969, but it was 1970 where the popularity of cats skyrocketed. So was this information given to the global think tanks, people like the Committee of 300, and they're like, oh, another way to, you know, trick and enslave people is by messing with their brains and messing with their sexuality. You know, maybe that's why cats are so popular. It's been engineered, you know, social engineering. Uh, this next link will cite a study that shows an increased in aggression in women and increased impulsivity in younger men. Another study found a correlation between homicide rates uh, in the population Another one found links to suicide rates and even traffic accidents because it, uh, this, this parasite can actually affect your reaction time. So scrolling down more, uh, let's see, determine, yeah, so it's talking about schizophrenia. And then, yeah, individuals diagnosed with schizophrenia were 2.73 more times likely to be infected with Toxoplasmosa gondii. So another personal story of why this is important to me is my uncle on my mother's side committed suicide. And the moment he was doing it, I didn't know this at the time, but I was sleeping in the bed with my cat. Like I'm saying, I love and loved cats. I have also you know, let them sleep in the bed with me. Now it's of course a big no-no. So I'm not judging anyone here. I'm just sharing information that I feel will be helpful on my journey of wholeness. So I was, I, you know, Shadow was, was purring on my chest like she usually did when I was slumbering. And I could hear her just get up. I, and she left the room. I, I, I always leave the door cracked. I was like, oh, that's weird. She usually stays here. The next morning, this is intense, but it's true. I went into my uncle's room, the two cats, were perched by him side by side and he was dead. He had hung himself in the closet and he was a diagnosed schizophrenic on antipsychotics and all kinds of medication for schizophrenia. So this is very close to my heart, not just, you know, with the relationship I had, but uh, romantically or not romantic because romance means a love between two men. It's not a good word. My, you know, uh, my ex-partner, <laughs> Not just that, but it's, it's also my family. This has affected my family. So that link to schizophrenia is really important. You know, I've clearly seen the research indicating that all the symptoms of schizophrenia, uh, bipolar, manic depressive, and this is important because of the suicide rates going up in the world right now, it's all just parasites. If you look at the symptoms side by side, both uh, hear, hearing voices, both have sudden change in interests or hobbies. Both have mood swings. Both have increased aggression. Both have uh, secluding yourself, wanting to spend more time alone, isolating yourself. It goes on and on. Trouble sleeping. So many, pretty much every single symptom of those, you know, chemical imbalances. The chemistry is imbalanced because of parasites. That's the root. So this next quote. Um, researchers have known for a while that motorcycle accident victims 
have twice the chance of toxo in infection as the rest of the population. Um, so that next quote, we already went over that with Robert Sapolsky. Uh, this next quote, you can click and read that on your own time. It's just about how Australia is paying millions of dollars to decimate feral cats that are um, affecting the nation's wildlife. And they're basically, you know, they're dropping flavored meats that cats like from the sky and lacing it with poison. I'm not saying I'm in support of that. I've seen evidence on like 1080 being about something completely different. I'm just saying that these historical things that most people have forgotten about of our history with um, demonizing and ritualistically killing cats is still going on today. Can you, I, I can't think of another pet. Of course we could you know, point to the cows, the pigs, all the other things that we eat from meat that could be part of that too. But this is a kind of in a class of its own. Cats have a special, very kind of morbid relationship with the human psyche. Um, so we're gonna scroll down a little bit more and get into the forgotten cat history. So of course we know that cats are associated with witchcraft. That's probably because, you know, maybe maybe a witch or maybe some witches, because um, that ex-girlfriend who was living with her cats um, was identified as a witch herself. You know, maybe this relationship between the witches and the cats is that the cats make women more aggressive, more isolated, more prone to risky behaviors and overly sexual in a way that's not maybe conducive with their culture. So they isolate and maybe, you know, scheme to get power over other people or, you know, basically um, impose their will, which is, that's pretty much when you boil down what is witchcraft, it's imposing your will on others. Um, and in Egypt, the goddess uh, Bast is represented by the cat, as was the Greek goddess of the underworld, Hecate. Very interesting that the Greeks associated cats with the demonic underworld. And also very interesting how cats like to torture their prey before finishing them off. You know, I've, I've seen, you know, I've had many friends that, you know, talk about, you know, women playing mind games with them and just torturing them. And hey, this goes both ways. I've known male friends who do that to women. This is not about, you know, men versus women. Maybe, you know, a black magician, a male black magician is also affected with cat partially. Some of them. Just an idea, possibility. I think it's absolute, um, you know, high likelihood. Um, so this, this is not sourced here. This is from Savon Bomar of Understanding. He talks about that cats are potentially a genetic hybrid made by the Egyptians crossing the DNA between a lion and a serpent, which is why cats have the body of a lion and the slit eyes of a serpent. And that they were engineered to locate and perpetuate prana, which is why, you know, cats are always seeking out the good vibes. And then when, when they find them, they, they're just purring. They're just purring. So maybe originally they were created as having like a utility spiritually could be. Um, and I'm not ruling out the possibility of like, Hey, well, maybe if we deworm the cats, it's all good. Totally. You know, that's on the table. It's on the table. I'm not a cat hater. I'm just a cat questioner. Uh, if we look at the next link, um, Cats were brought to Europe and Egypt, and the Romans enjoyed a decent reputation for a long time. Oh, and the, the Romans enjoyed them probably because they were such a boon to agricultural societies. So there could be this synergy when we made the mistake of going back to agriculture, because really we should just be making fruit forests and having just, you know, plucking. We don't need to be bending over. The ergonomics of, you know, vegetable planting is not conducive to health in the body. You know, maybe it's useful for a transition to like, you know, reaching, extending the spine to grab the fruit from the tree. Maybe there's a, a balance to be had. I mean, certainly, but um, this could be how it got so ingrained into the culture is that cats eat meat. They're not going to eat the vegetables and they're also going to kill the rats and rabbits that go after the vegetables. But, you know, maybe this whole problem of like, oh, they're eating my, my, uh, my field. Well, it's like, well, maybe you're planting the wrong thing. Maybe you should just be on the fruit that is made for you. Um, 
So looking down, we see that medieval people were indeed superstitious, but also modern people are. Um, and, uh, and cats agree, but let's face it, they're assholes. And I've experienced that a lot with cats, just a real conceitedness. Um, and uh, not with dogs. Dogs, it's just like pure love. Cats, it's mind games. <laughs> mind games, arrogant, prideful mind games. Uh, maybe they got that pride from the, the lion that's in them and they got this little body and like that serpentine secrecy and surreptitiousness that is a dangerous combination. Um, so yeah, you can teach, you can teach oxen to plow. So this is what they were saying about the reason there's a, an association, an association with cats being demonic from an ecclesiastical perspective is that the Christians saw that God put the animals here for our benefit. Uh, and we can make all manners of animal kind of do what we want, like teach oxen how to plow, dogs how to fetch, elephants how to paint. I'm not saying those things are right. But the thing is, is that you can't really make a cat do anything. Cats are very difficult to train. Um, and they say that, you know, maybe that's because it's infested with the spirit of Lucifer. Like the Pope said. Maybe the Pope said something true. Um, if we go down, we'll see scholarblogs.emory. One example... Um, if we could just go up a little bit more. Thank you so much, Malika. One example um, is a cat. Oh yeah, so this is that cats, and this is what happened. This is what I'm talking about with my uncle, with the cat leaving me right before he died, is that uh, at a nursing home in Rhode Island, there's a cat named Oscar. And Oscar was known for predicting death in patients. It would climb onto the dying patient's bed and stay with them until they died. Sometimes Oscar the cat would stay with the patient a day before they died or even hours beforehand. Maybe this is why they have an association with the, with the underworld. I mean, complete possibility. It would make total sense to me. Uh, this next macabre picture is of a ritual that we're going to see, a festival of setting cats on fire in certain parts of Europe. Not condoning these things. I'm just observing this reality of our history with cats. Uh, so Pope Gregory the ninth kicked off centuries of bad times with the black cat when he declared in the early 13th century that Lucifer was half cat. Uh, the bull described the sex binar, uh, a sect, but bizarre initiation rites. And I, I'm, I, I'm guessing that the Pope is actually describing what the inner Jesuit circles are doing that, uh, the initiates would kiss, kiss a toad. And then, uh, they would kiss the bottom of a person dressed up like a cat or a cat itself. And you have to understand the whole reason for these depraved, degrading rituals is to allow more and more parasites to enter the body. This is why there's a sense of vampirism in you know hearing about people like the Illuminati. Notice how ill lumen is like illumination that is ill. Ill lumen at eye at the eye, which is supposed to be enlightened from within, illumination, you illumine with a spotlight, right? But enlightenment is, is inside out. So illumination is trying to be like an outside in synthetic emulation of enlightenment, whereas enlightenment is an organic inside out oil in the lamp, the chrism oil ignited expression. So this is why the Illuminati, their game is to kind of blind people with the light and lead them on a path outside of themselves. And the people in those, um, in those kind of circles, they do all this degradation and blood drinking and animal eating and sacrifice to allow their body to host more parasites so that they can be a radio antennas for demons. Because there's a lot of evidence, or not evidence, but from what I've read, parasites are like a radio antenna to the demonic entities in counter space or the astral plane or hell or whatever you call it. So the more demon infest people are, um, the higher up they go. That way when they get to the full, you know, degrees where they realize that a lot of this stuff is being run by Satan or Lucifer or whatever you want to call it, 
uh, they're completely mind control and programmed through these parasites because it's a hive mind mentality. So that's why they do that crazy ritual that Pope Gregory describes in the bowl. Uh, Queen Elizabeth, for her coronation, she burned cats alive as part of a celebration. So there was a thing where people loved back in the day to see cats killed. Uh, Cat Wednesday, these are some festivals about um, killing cats. In Belgium, townspeople hurled cats from the belfry onto the cobbled streets and then set them on fire as if throwing them was not enough. And they called that Cats Wednesday. The evening combined gruesome entertainment of, and a culling of the cat population. Um, and now they do it, but it's just with stuffed animals. So it's like an effigy. Another th phenomenon is cat burning. Um, this medieval French entertainment involved cats suspended over wooden pyres set in wicker cages, strung from the maypoles, and then set alight. In some places, kuriamads, or cat chasers, would drench a cat in flammable liquid, light it on fire, and then chase it through the town. The embers and charred bits of the cats from these blazes would collect, or would be collected, and people would take them home for good luck. Another ritual of herding cats um, that I do not condone, but is an interesting phenomenon in our psyche. Beating the cats out of a barrel. Gosh, so savage. So uh, basically it was, they were treating cats like pinatas. And then uh, once they were beaten and it kind of like tumbled out of the pinata, it would try to get away. Really brutal. Um, a cat queen. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. They would, they would actually, geez, they would, they would crown the cats that were battered the best. I don't know. You have to understand these people thought they were, they were, um, torturing demons. So they saw it as a good thing. So if you're wondering like, how is this possible? That's why the weirdest I think is, uh, in Italy, boys would nail cats to the post of a tree and then headbutt them to death. Savage. I'm sure that's not good for your brain. And then you can also read about the cat massacre, which is basically apprentices were being treated worse than the cats. And so they manipulated the owners to um, ordering a mass slaughter of the cats. And um, they rounded them up. They held a trial for the cats. They found the cats guilty of witchcraft and uh, they hung the cats. Really weird, but true. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a little slice into its relationship in, in the history of our relationship with cats. Now we're gonna get into MK Ultra sex kitten programming. So this link from uh, Nicholson, you can check out on your own time for a further in depth, but we're gonna read this uh, description, this quote. So the, the beta sex kitten victims are usually selected from a young age and come back from broken homes, often with abusive parents. The MK Ultra process involves trans, uh, traumatizing the victim so badly that the brain splits into two forming a new personality called an altar. The altar is programmable in that it can be given a trigger phrase in the same way a dog can be taught to sit. Techniques can include both physical and mental torture. For instance, giving the victim a pet, then killing the pet in front of them some months later, which shatters the consciousness and then they introduce a savior mentality and it makes them kind of, uh, it's like a problem reaction solution to make them embrace a new savior. MK Ultra is used extensively in Hollywood to produce mind control puppets in the forms of celebrities as well as sex slaves. It goes hand in hand with pedophilia. So when you do click on that link of Nicholson, it's going to take you to a page and you're going to see all of the. Actually, if we could just go ahead and click on that, Malika, that link of uh, Nicholson that we just read from. We're just going to scroll down and maybe you'll have some aha moments of just looking at some of these images that of, of uh, people that have been venerated in the celebrity sphere. And you're gonna see that they're wearing uh, cat symbolism, whether it's like the pattern of a cat or even like a wild cat, like a jaguar texture or whatever. Uh, but as we scroll down, uh, you're, we're, we're just gonna see these, uh, these images in Hollywood 
and you're going to realize that this is very deep part of the program. And here we have Lady Gaga in a, a cat outfit. I've seen so many women wearing that in the last year. At least at least 10 women I've seen wearing that design. And I've been pretty secluded, so that says something. Uh, and then we see Kate, Katy Perry. This is all part of Monarch Mind Control as we scroll down more. You know, she's dressed like a sexy cat. Um, as you probably have noticed, um, and they, you know, this is an example of starting at young age. Um, and so th this is just, it is rife and rampant in the Hollywood industry of uh, treating women in this altar to act like cats because it puts them in a false sense of empowerment. And it's very tied into witchcraft. So basically women are traumatized. I've seen this so many times in people that I know. A woman goes through a deep trauma and then she embraces witchcraft as a tool to protect what has been hurt in her. So it makes sense, right? If you've been hurt, you wanna protect yourself. So this is a, a huge way that women get turned to black magic is by being vulnerable, by being hurt, and then embracing these problem reaction solutions of, okay, now we're gonna just give you black magic to drive you even deeper into spiritual depravity. So you see all those images, you get the idea of how prominent that is. Uh, there's more we can see on our own time. We're just gonna go back to the presentation and wrap this up. Um, and uh, that's just a sliver. I mean, there, there's so much symbolism in Hollywood for cats. And you see in that quote right here, black, black cats are the quintessential Halloween icons and the number one costume choice for both elementary age children and women in their freshman year of college. Why is that? It's because the sub subconscious knows dressing like a cat, that makes me feel more sexy and that makes me appear more sexy because also in the men's in a man's epigenetic memory, they probably know deep down, oh, this girl's into cats. Oh, she's also maybe uh, easier to have sex with because she's prone to risky, risky behavior. Her part of her brain has been rerouted. So it's something that she would fear uh, is now sexually arousal. Arou uh, it, it is, uh, a, it's an arousal for her. Uh, so the subconscious knows this. This is why, like, even when I saw a girl in Hollywood dressed like a cat, I was like, damn, she's sexy. It is attractive. But why was that? It's because we had this history and this inner knowing of what's really going on. Um, and then these are links for you to explore on your own time to encourage in this Omnicast for you to be part of this. This is something that I really want people to engage with and do your own research. At the very bottom of here, you can leave your own comments. I want to know what you think, or you can email me at askamber at protonmail.com. Uh, and right now on this frame right here, we're going to look at uh, cathode and anode. So notice how cathode begins with cat. And cathode is very similar to Catholic church. When we start to look at the symbolism of uh, Washington, D.C., as in like a direct current, the Pope having this cap of the pineal and even the pine cone. The pine cone is uh, a capacitor functionally in the body. It has a positive and negative channel. That's the Ida and, and Pingala going to the pineal. I know one is prominently for the, the, pink, the pineal is the Pingala. But the Ida also connects to the pineal. It's the positive and negative, the anode and the cathode. The anode being the positive charge that attracts the negative electrons. And then the cathode being the negative charge attracting the positive protons. So this is why Hollywood is preying on all the positive energy of youth's creativity. Because they are the negative cathode, even, even the Catholic Church. They're the negative cathode preying on all the positive energy of the children. And I really think that these whole communion wafers are laced with parasites that they know where it goes into the body, how it compromises the being so that they can take advantage of it. And I would guess that a lot of these children that have been sexually abused, they probably have Toxoplasmosa gondii. They probably get seduced into that system that things that they should be afraid of, this guy who literally looks like a vampire, I should be afraid of that, but like, you know, it's stimulating my creativity, even like maybe my sexuality. Maybe I'm like curious about that. 
This is a very serious thing. Um, so I, I think that, you know, the, uh, the Catholic Church knows this. This is why they chose, you know, cat. Because even if we scroll up a little bit, we'll see some etymological entries for you to check out in your own time that uh, um, Catholic, or no, that um, cat actually comes from a, a, a root word, catus, K-A-T-A-S, that means to, to go down. And so if cats are like related to this underworld energy, this like demonic, seductive, pulling down control, literally the word cat could mean like bringing you down. Whereas dog is resonating with God above, Cats are kind of the grounding energy. Um, and I would say that uh, a cat is an expression of the undivine feminine. Because cats, you know, felines are kind of more feminine and dogs are kind of naturally like more masculine. If you had to just like black and white it, I know there's like a spectrum of expression there. But um, that could be a relationship of like cats are this undivine essence pulling down. And if you just look at the definitions of cats, in the early 13th century, cat was a word that meant a spiteful or angry woman. We know that that is a psychological and physiological uh, parasite that's enacting that reason. It was also slang for a prostitute. It was the slang for a yoni. Um, historically, it was also used as a wheeled shelter in the Middle Ages as a siege weapon to allow assailants to approach enemy defenses. And if this theory I have and others have is true that cats are kind of this, you know, this furry shelter used in the modern ages as a siege weapon to allow assailants to approach enemy defenses and infect with a parasite that compromises um, your, your judgment essentially and your, your spiritual, mental and physical health that's kind of like a, a Trojan horse, so to speak. Um, so if we keep scrolling down, we're, we're at the conclusion of the show. Um, much thanks to Malika for doing this last minute. These extras, I'm just gonna touch on very briefly. Um, I, I would not be surprised if this whole COVID thing goes to a point where they try to MK ultra the world by saying, oh, well, it looks like evidence is showing this relationship between COVID infection and uh, owning cats or dogs. And so we need, to, we need you to, it's now required for you to euthanize your cats. That is what they do in MK Ultra programming. They, they kill the cat that you bond to, to break you psychologically, to program an alter because it fractures the mind. So I would not be surprised if the MK Ultra that's already deep in the worldwide uh, uh, zeitgeist and psyche is going to go to another level where they break people psychologically by declaring that, okay, you need to, you know, kill your pets because they're dirty and people are already primed of like, I need to wash my hands. And it's just one step to saying like, well, look at this animal. It's filthy. It's licking its own butt and, and genitals. And then it's like licking your face. So we need to do do something about that. And I'm absolutely not going to be surprised when they say that the COVID is in the money. So we got to get rid of the money and go to digital. That's just kind of an obvious problem reaction solution that's been building for a long time. Now, this last thing I'm going to say is very dark and unsubstantiated. So this is allegedly, I have heard from a friend who's a vegan activist that there's a kind of slurry on the slaughterhouses that animals in shelters go to that is collected after they're processed and it is unclassified by the FDA and it is added to things like Beyond Meat Burger as a satanic ritual abuse of people who are trying to go vegan. So Beyond Meat is already, you know, it's super dodgy. I've had it. You know, so I might have had that slurry. It grosses me out, of course, but I know how to clean my body. It's, it's, it's not a big deal. And uh, a, a big takeaway that I probably should have started with is that you can clean and kill these cat parasites in the brain with black walnut 
hole. So look up black walnut hole. It's probably good that we all take that on, a, on an annual at least basis uh, to kill that parasite. If you know other ways or have found other research on how to clean the body, because it, it's in the brain. So uh, if, if you know other remedies for uh, cleaning out the brain and killing parasites in the brain, because we know pork worms go in the brain too, uh, email me. Uh, if we scroll down, uh, once you're at this link, you can just scroll all the way down and you can either leave a comment on this post or you can uh, email me directly. If we just scroll up a little bit more, you're going to see the sign off details. Yeah, so that's the comment button you can enter. And then if we scroll up a little bit more, um, we're going to see uh, my email. So if we just scroll up. It doesn't, it doesn't let me scroll anymore. Oh, it doesn't let you scroll anymore. Maybe um, can you try refreshing the page, or, um, or or pressing up on your on your keyboard. Sometimes if you press up on the keyboard, it'll work. So that's the that's basically the end of the show. I just want to show you um, where you can find my contact de details, um, because uh, so if you just scroll up a little bit. Perfect. A little bit more. Okay, right there. Perfect, right there. So uh, the Essenes have a, a saying that is love in all ways, always in love. Uh, my legal name is Ember. My spirit name is Amber. It's been an honor to be your remembrancer today. I never was a name to begin with. You can email me at askamber at protonmail.com. If you want to check out my art, my photography, which is syncretically based on the chakra system. You can go to ember.space. Uh, my 432 Hertz music and poetry is at SoundCloud forward slash Remembrancer. And this is the platform for wholeness and syncretizing and synergizing the left brain artist or the right brain artist, the left brain scientist and the center corpus colossum healer. Uh, so that is the presentation for today. May this bring clarity healing and an intelligent response to this real epidemic that's been going on for many years, if not centuries. And we can reestablish how we are to be in stewardship of the animals in this realm with respect, not only for them, but for our own biology. So thank you, divine goddess Malika for uh, selflessly stepping in at the last minute and hosting this today. Um, if you haven't seen Malika's presentation with Santos, you really need to go check those out. Those out. She has a lot of amazing wisdom, um, and it's just it's been a, a complete honor. And if anyone wants to do an extension on this, 